ST Filmmaker here with another edition of ST Survival Tips. Now I covered surviving disasters and living off practically one food source, so what else is there left? Self-defense. However, I'm not going to teach you how to defend yourself against muggings or things like that because there are millions of self-defense videos on YouTube, both legal and illegal, so look those up. However, I can teach you how to defend yourself in the urban jungle. Much like the real jungle, the urban jungle is host of various wildlife that, while not quite a bother, could pose as a serious threat. From rats to raccoons to even something as big and dangerous as stray dogs to even the rare chance of forest wildlife comes to you, like bears, wildcats, and coyotes. However, due to the Endangered Species Act and the Animal Cruelty Act, there are many limits to how you can defend yourself, some of which are costly while others only cost a few bucks and a lot of imagination. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. As this covers different animals, different steps must be taken to defend yourself. First we'll start with the smallest ones, rats. Rats, despite their size, are capable of many disasters such as mundane things like infest your house to worse things such as carrying life-threatening diseases or eating you alive. Here are ways to prevent that. Make one-way rat traps. A one-way trap is exactly what it says on the tin. A harmless yet effective way to trap one or more rats depending on the size and numbers. To make this, you need the following items. One pop bottle, cutting tools, glue, and bait. Cut the bottle top off and put it upside down inside the bottle, gluing it tightly. Then put the bait inside and leave it to where the rat's most frequent at. The concept is similar to a wasp and lobster trap. Mice and rats varying in size can get into the tight spaces, but when this bad boy is complete, once they get in there, they can't get out. And you have your chance to either keep them as pets, let them out in the wild area, or kill them all. For more good measure, line the entire inside with two-faced tape before putting the bottle top in upside down. That way any stragglers won't come out. Second is raccoons. Unlike rats, raccoons are protected by the Animal Cruelty Act, so trapping them as opposed to outright killing them could get you anywhere from a fine to jail time depending on where you live. However, there is no law against using defensive tactics against them. To outwit the raccoon, you must know the basic anatomy and behavior of the raccoon. For starters, their uniqueness for having an opposable thumb is one of the factors that come in handy when raiding your garbage can. If you can't afford anything short of city supply garbage cans, then here are some preventive strategies. If you live in Canada like myself, we are given what is known as a green bin. A bin designed for any if all organic waste such as meat bones and potato skins as well as other things to make compost with. This particular bin is equipped with a locking device that should prevent any animals from opening it. However, it's only equipped to that bin. The garbage and recycling bins here have no such luxury. I learned that the hard way when the raccoon just surprised me jumping out of the recycling bin. Luckily for me, it ran the other way instead of attacking. This can be solved by using a simple weighted object, be it a heavy log or even a barbell weight plate. If you own a dog, you can't use it as a means of protection. Don't get me wrong, it's a clever means, but you also risk infecting the dog with rabies and you have Kuja on your hands. But that doesn't make them all the way useless, as loud barking will scare away raccoons due to their fear of loud noises and larger predators. Having a dog has even a better advantage if you have a male dog. Let's get down to it. You have a well-trained dog, well-behaved, but then there's the occasional piss accident. Normally when that happens, you scold the dog and clean the pee up. But that accident becomes a key effective advantage in the War of Raccoons. This part I'm going to tell you is going to sound gross, so anybody listening to this, I hope you have a strong stomach. After you clean up the urine, use the rag or newspaper that's soaked in and rub it all over the garbage can as well as other vulnerable spots around the outside of the house. When the raccoon comes prowling, it will smell the area and know that it's marked by an even bigger predator. Their sight is another way of outwitting them. Raccoons are mostly nocturnal animals. While they are used to the daylight, much like us humans, they have to adjust to it. So quick flashes of bright lights can be enough to stun them long enough to make your distance, or if you're lucky, it could scare them away. Unfortunately, the methods to these bright lights could eventually inadvertently trigger a seizure to an unsuspecting neighbor, so use this one as a last resort. With that said, repelling them is one thing, defending yourself against an attack is another. 
Raccoons are timid creatures and will normally try to avoid humans once it finds a way around them. However, when they uh, perceive themselves as cornered, they will attack you through biting and scratching. If you live in a town heavily populated with raccoons, then repelling them will be pointless. So my advice to you, the listeners, to armor up. But since Kevlar is pricey, I suggest a cheaper alternative. Much like any other animal, when a raccoon attacks, they go for the more vulnerable areas, such as the face and throat. The main instinct would be to raise your arms up. However, with those sharp teeth and claws, they would tear through your sleeves and arms like there's no tomorrow. However, despite their sharp teeth, they are not strong. An average adult raccoon weighs about 35 pounds, and its jaws are strong enough to break through human skin. However, here's a list of things you need to better armor yourself. Two cans of apple juice, and one jacket. Empty the juice cans, and then open both ends of the cans with a can opener. It shouldn't be a problem, but for good measure, file the or sand the inner edges to prevent cuts. Then place one can each into the sleeves of your jacket until they reach your forearms. Now, it can be any jacket, but I recommend leather or jean because of its higher durability. When an attack is inevitable, place your arms over your face. The raccoon will keep trying to bite you, so your best course of action will be to throw him off of you. If you're lucky enough, it'll run off in defeat, and you will go home with a few dents in your armor. Third is stray dogs. Now, dogs are more stronger and powerful than raccoons, so the armor trick may not work. However, you may not even have to fight the dog off at all. First and foremost, like the raccoon, study the behavior of the dog. More specifically, also study their appearance. If they have a collar, then odds are they're just a lost dog looking for their owner. Don't win him over just yet, for depending on the breed, if he sees a stranger, he might get scared and run, or worse, bite you. And he's totally justified in doing it. If he is a lost dog, try to befriend it. Approach him slowly and calmly, and most importantly, show no fear. Because if you get scared, so does he, and the above-mentioned stuff has happened. It also helps if you have food at hand, just to show him you're friendly. If you can find the number on his collar, you can just simply call the owner right away. The same techniques can be used on a collarless dog, but it's risky, for the ones without collars could be rabbit or feral. If you're lucky, some are smart and even use their situation to their advantage to get food. I remember reading a story about a group of feral Russian dogs using their cuteness factor to organize a subway-wide food begging scam. However, if you're not so lucky, you might have an attack on your hands. If you don't have dog mace handy, the best trick in repelling them is not only cheap, but free in certain places. Say, do you remember the condiment packets at your local McDonald's? Specifically, the pepper packets. Well, that money saver can save your life, as it can be used as a makeshift mace, as well as a smell disruptor. This disorients the dog long enough for you to make your escape to the nearest phone. Last but not least is coyotes. Now you can use the same trick as I mentioned before when it comes to stray dogs, however you are less likely to succeed. Most people, I am sorry to say, are stupid. When they see a coyote, rather than call the proper authorities, they leave food out for them. Coyotes, like most animals in the wild, are not used to being fed their food, and once they do, they become dependent on humans. However, unlike most animals who are cautious and wait till the humans be out of sight, the coyote takes a third option and arrives earlier than the last time it was fed. So when you're in the middle of leaving your food out, it'll not only be there, but you'd be dessert. However, there's a way you can turn the stupid thing into a means of animal control. If you're listening, and I've already fed the coyote the first time, here are some simple things you can follow. Don't leave the food out in the same place twice. Feed at a safe distance and call animal control ahead of time and stall it. I would mention bears, but so many have already did that so many times that I can't think of anything new, except for this piece of advice. Run like hell and don't stop until you're in the nearest highway. As usual, debate, argue, and let me know what I missed. Stay tuned for more.